Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Richardson. That uh, concludes the uh, superintendent's report. Thank you, Doc. Dr. Hefner. <clears throat> that brings us to our public participation. Just prior to doing that, I, I recognize students being here earlier because we recognize so many, and I know we have some students to the left over here, probably for your social studies class, I would hope. So I hope the writing goes well. And um, Dr. Dr. Melton, I will, I will tell you, you might want to turn, we have the distinguished Al Dozier here from the Irmo News, if you want to make sure he understands that that directive is coming from the State Department, too. <laughs> and the la last group I did want to recognize, and I didn't recognize, I didn't realize we weren't going to recognize you publicly, but we have two young Boy Scouts here, I believe, and we have two Scout leaders, and we want to thank you for your civic responsibility and your timeliness that, that you're here participating. We appreciate you being here, but always appreciate it. That does bring us to our public participation, and I will tell you that the board provides an opportunity and encourages public participation at each, each meeting. We respectfully ask that you adhere to the procedures and decorum provided in board policy, BEDH, public participation at meetings. Your comments will be limited to three minutes, and any question asked during public participation and placed in writing will receive a re written response in a timely manner. And we have one public participant tonight, and that's Dr. Barbara Waldman. Dr. Waldman. Good evening, Chairman Gant, Superintendent Hefner, and members of the board. I come before you tonight to ask you to delay the second and final reading approval of Administrative Rule KDER, Relation with Parent Organizations. I have several reasons for making this request and will explain them as much as time allows. My first concern is found on page two under the Management of Funds section. The last sentence of this paragraph, uh, uh, the last sentence of the first paragraph of that section states, no district employee shall serve and it goes on to finish as an officer of a booster or other parent organization or program. I have concerns over the last part of that sentence. District 5 is fortunate to have very strong and selfless group volunteer, groups of volunteers and has a very loyal group of employees who choose to have their children attend school in District 5. This statement prohibits parents of children attending District 5 to serve in a leadership role in a parent organization if they happen to be an employee of the district. Over the last few weeks, I've discovered from direct conversations with officers of some parent organizations that they still were not aware of all the details of this rule. They were planning to have officers other than the treasurer who are parents and district employees for the next year. The district will stand to lose some very dedicated volunteers if you retain the latter part of the statement I quoted above and will have some parent organizations scrambling to find other officers for next year at this late date. I'm requesting that the last portion of the statement prohibiting employees from serving as officers other than the treasurer be deleted from this rule. I'm also requesting that you table the second and final reading approval of this policy until it is clear that each parent organization is fully aware of all the content of this administrative rule. Even though the previous versions of this document have been brought to the superintendent's parent advisory cabinet meetings, not all of the parent groups have been in attendance and may not know the entire content of the rule. There are a few other points of confusion I've seen as I have read through this document. For example, the fifth bullet point on the bottom of page one states that the school support organization will, quote, incorporate as a nonprofit organization obtaining the appropriate 501c designation. And then it goes on. But on page two, the last sentence of the first paragraph seems to contradict that statement when it says, if tax exempt status is desired, this seeming contradiction needs to be clarified. I'm also concerned, I'll try to speed this up, um, that there is a significant cost to these parent groups to be able to do the incorporation and the 501c designation that's been, that's been requested. 
Incorporation costs around $100. 501c designation probably costs around $900 for the group to do. Also, if a group is already a 501c organization but not incorporated and now becomes incorporated, it will be looked at as a new entity and will have to get the 501c designation again, another $900. So, okay. Again, there's a couple of other points of confusion um, in this policy, and I'd be happy to talk with board members afterwards. But given these comments and some of the other um, points of confusion in this rule, I'm just asking that after you discuss this rule tonight, that you um, withhold, you table your um, vote on on the administrative rule KBER. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Baldwin. That concludes our public participation. And uh, we'll now go to our action agenda.